Hey guys, it's Ray Spray Wash. Hope everybody's doing well. Let me get my monitor kind of set up here a little bit. Hope all are well today. Welcome, welcome. I know this thing said uh, 12.45 p.m. and it meant 12.45 a.m. on there. So I'll let a couple of people get on. We'll keep this for, I didn't want to go and redo it because I already had the graphics and all that amazing stuff on there. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about uh, James Hardy siding. It's um, let a few people get on actual date of this show is do, 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 Wednesday, August 24th, and it's 11.45. Hey, Rusty, how are you doing? Seeing some, some folks getting on here. Um, having some, some conversation and some issues are, are popping up uh, about this James Hardy sighting, and it's one of those uh, sightings that, that one of those products that we talk about a lot in the plant and property protection. Um, I also just went in in Spray Wash Pro uh, on Facebook. There's a document file and on the website, there's a document library. And we put stuff in there that, that could, you know, could really help. I put the James Hardy uh, warranty information out there. If you're not a member, it's no big secret. You can go out and find it. We just try to make stuff, you know, e easy, easy for people. The question though, on this, on this Hardy board siding, and first off, let's go the basics of it. Hardy board siding is a cement fiber siding. It looks like wood uh, on the, the picture. Um, uh, on the intro page, that's a hardy board siding. It's got a fairly distinctive wood grain pattern to it, but it doesn't rot because it is a um, a, a, a fiber board, a, a cement um, um, product on there. Hardy has some extremely extremely specific instructions on how to clean it, and Really, the the uh, what's the word I'm looking for the, the basis, for lack of a better term, uh, of our plant and property um, class protection class is understanding the understanding what you're spraying, understand what it is you're cleaning, understand the characteristics of this, and, and most importantly, get out there and understand what the manufacturers say. Because as long as you do what the manufacturers tell you to do on these products, you're not going to have as much liability. If you go on to a, a drive it structure and you spray hot water on it, uh, you've probably just voided their warranty. Uh, if you go up to a a, a hardy uh, uh, hardy plank building and you start jamming that at, at four thousand psi, you've voided their warranty on that because the, the the instructions are very explicit on what kind of pressures to use, what kind of tips to use, and even what kind of chemicals to use on there. And um, I see Doug's chiming. I can't tell Doug I was doing this. I, typically, we're on here together, but uh, just had something come up here in the last, you know, 30 minutes or so and, and wanted to do this. They have extreme specific instructions on how it's supposed to, to be installed, 100%. Uh, and you can find all those guides, you know, out there. But we're seeing lots of guys um, with the industry paint issues. And a lot of it's directly related to the Hardy. And, and keep in mind, Hardy comes in, in a couple of different ways. James Hardy comes with the uh, as a raw or primed Hardy board. And then the, the, the builder, installer, homeowner can paint it whatever color they want. Most of our Hardy that we're seeing out there now is, is the Color Plus technology. The Color Plus technology... The Color Plus technology is, is impregnated with the pigments. So it, it's, it's basically coming pre-finished, for lack of a better term. 
So we've got a pre-finished Hardy board that's out there. Now, some of the things with, with Hardy is, is understanding what you're allowed to clean Hardy with, uh, what you're allowed to, to uh, what kind of pressures you're allowed to clean Hardy with. And, uh, you know, without a doubt, you, you should go and research any of these sub, substructures, structures, substrates that you are cleaning and understand what it is you're cleaning. Because I also tell you this, and again, I'm, I'm going back to the plant and property protection class. Whenever you sit there and you're able to explain to the customers that you know what the heck is going on, you're honestly outselling your competition and you're going to be looked at as an expert uh, and not just, you know, some some schlub who who is working his way through, you know, this job. You, you, you literally command an expert level here as a contractor on this job, whenever you can recite back to them the cleaning requirements, the cleaning specifications that this manufacturer has established. So if you've not gotten it from the class, I highly recommend you go out there and look at, at what the Hardy specs are. Something else about Hardy is they have kind of stepped back. Hardy approves three cleaners for mold and mildew. I'm in Florida. We never clean mold because that's a licensable activity, but I clean a lot of mildew. Hardy allows three different cleaners. Hardy does not say, hey, use a certain percentage of bleach on this product. What Hardy does do is they say that you should use Joe Max, Mold Armor, or Mildew Check. That's their recommended cleaner. And then it tells you what pressure to spray it at and how far away to stand and what degree tip to use. So two of those products that they recommend, actually the directions on there specifically say to mix with bleach. So if you ever have someone saying, well, gosh, I'm not, I'm not supposed to use bleach on, on Hardy Board because Hardy Board doesn't say that. Well, that's actually incorrect because two of the three cleaners that Hardy Board recommends for you as a professional or even as a homeowner to use say mix with household bleach. And that's the Jomax and uh, the mil uh, Mildew Check. Go read their directions and it says, okay, mix with bleach and apply it through a downstreamer or scrub onto a, to a property. So that solves your bleach issue with Hardy Board. And it's, imparent, it's, it's, it's important to, to understand that whenever you're talking to these customers. If they ever say, well, Hardy Board didn't say you should use bleach. Well, actually, Hardy Board does say you should use bleach or sodium hypochlorite on there. They just kind of remove themselves from the process a little bit. But now going into the paint issues, and, 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 and paint issues with, with Hardy Board is a little bit of a misnomer because it's not necessarily a paint that's on there. It's more of a coating or a color impregnation Um that's done, you know, millions of board feet at a time. And they have their standard colors that they use. But on this Color Plus technology, reading on to, to their, you know, warranty coverage. Also, you ought to understand that the finish on a uh, uh, hardy board is warranted for 15 years. Um, which actually it lasts a lot longer than 15 years, but um, it's um, thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. Uh, somebody told me I look pretty today, but uh, you know, Hardy Hardy's actual warranty is for 15 years, but I've seen Hardy last much longer than that. Now, here's the part that I wanted to get into regarding uh, the the the. the pigmentation or the color on the hardy and I think this is where so many contractors wind up getting in into trouble on that and and nothing that I say here while I typically you know can be a little flippant in, in my words I don't mean anything to impugn hardy uh, I think it's a fantastic product that 
nothing I say do I do I mean to say, you know, they're they're a substandard product whatsoever. Certainly um, far superior than a lot of, of products out there with you know with their rot. I don't say resistance. It's just they it won't rot. It's it's concrete, you know, compared to like the old LP and and Louisiana Pacific and Georgia Pacific siding that 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 you know if not installed properly, it would rot like crazy. Um, 20 years ago, 30 years ago in, in my career, you know, in real estate, we used to go around to houses and knock off the bottom two foot and have to replace it. And we'd replace it with hardy, hardy plank back in those days. Uh, but so the warranty does not, and I'm going to read this, this from you for the, for the color match. Um, First off, any claims of damage caused by mold or mildew are expressly excluded. So right there, it's a good way to tell the people that, you know, if, if the mildew or mold damages your property, that is not included under your warranty. So Mr. Homeowner, Mr. Association Manager, you're really best to go and, and have your property clean because if, if you don't maintain it and if you get mildew and mold on there, it actually nukes your warranty. So they're not going to take any claims caused by any damage claims caused by mildew or, or, or mold. Um, also, a lack of proper maintenance um, and, and any cause other than manufacturing defects. Here's the really important part whenever you're causing oxidation or color changing on here. So it expressly says in the Hardy warranty for the Color Plus technology, which is their color impregnated boards, that this warranty does not cover fading or chalking of the finish due to normal weathering. Normal weathering is defined as exposure to sunlight in extremes of weather and atmosphere, which will cause any painted surface to gradually fade, chalk, or accumulate dirt over time. This warranty will cover the finish against excess color change beyond normal weathering. Excess color change is defined as a change in color of the finish by greater than four Delta E units within the first three years of install of the Hardy products with Color Plus technology. Hardy shall have the sole discretion to determine whether Hardy products with Color Plus technology exhibits excess color change. So there you have it. They say that oxidation is normal and natural. It says that their product is going to oxidize. It further says that warranties regarding oxidation are only covered for three years. Uh, warranties regarding color change are only going to be covered uh, for three years. So you basically have a document that's saying, yep, yeah, our, our, our product is going to oxidize. And it's not covered under warranty unless it dramatically happens within the first three years of cleaning. So as we're cleaning Hardy Board, we could be exacerbating a problem that's already there. And I'm guessing, you know, a three year on the oxidation is a pretty short time, pretty, pretty hardcore exclusion on their warranty. So I'm guessing they might have known this was an issue out there is why they made that an exclusion in that period of time, you know, especially whenever you consider a lot of the old, you know, exterior paints are, are five to seven year paints for, for an outside paint, exterior grade paint. This color is guaranteed for, for a much less time, you know, less than, you know, half of, of that time or only half of, of that time. Does the warranty take place on, does the warranty cover the exterior color on that? So understand that you're already washing a surface that's prone to oxidation. Understand that, that this document can essentially be very powerful to you because it says, hey, our product is prone to oxidizing. It says that uh, 
doesn't cover fading or chalking of the finish due to normal weathering. They know that normal weathering is going to cause their property, their, their product to fade and chalk. It also says, hey, if you don't wash it, your, 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 your warranty is void as well. So kind of a catch 22 right there. But that's another reason why you want to go and follow these manufacturer specifications as far as the cleaning is concerned. Because if you don't, now you've got an issue on there. And whenever you go and mix the mold armor or the, the mildew check, I'm sorry, not the mold armor, the mildew check or the Joe Max on there, you better not be mixing it too strong and too hot. You better not be listening to the goofballs in some of these forums that are saying, oh, I spray everything at 50-50. Because now you got a problem. Now you have ruined the, 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 the warranty that these people have. Now you've actually caused some of the oxidation, which was most likely going to occur anyway. You may not have caused it, but whenever you clean the property and now it looks chalky um, and you get an insurance claim against you and, and they see where you've been asking on a forum or, or they ask you, what did you do that? Well, I filled up a bucket with bleach and 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 sprayed it down or i i, I used uh you know i took my my um three prong blend manifold with with um you know the dials on there and 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 i turned it you know how well you know mr washer how do you know what percentage that is well i don't really know what what percentage that is i mean because they told me to put this one dial on a five and and, and this dial goes on a, a two or a three on there but uh that's what i usually usually you know wash at on there so not being able to to have a specific um range that you're shooting in could cause you problems because you're going against their recommendations for cleaning on there. You know, this is why it's important to understand SH. Okay, what is SH versus household bleach? You know, what percentage, whenever it says for me to mix with household bleach, well, what's the percentage of household bleach on there? Okay, typically 6% SH. So if I go and mix it with, with, with a 10.5% SH, I need to cut back the amount of 10.5% that I that I that I put this into and consider I'm using more of a 6% SH on there. Like if it said three parts water to one part household bleach, you wouldn't then go put three parts water to one part 10 and a half percent sanitizer or 12 and a half percent SH because now you're, you're literally cleaning it at double the strength that they recommend. This is where you need to, 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 to understand this. Um, I'm going to go and read all these comments here in a minute. And I see a, uh, uh, a couple of, uh, a couple of really good ones. So this, I mean, I, I'm talking about this. And, and so this doesn't have anything to do with the paint. This is the, the Hardy board color plus technology uh, that's out there, which is the, the, for lack of a better term, pre-painted hardy board uh, planks that are out there. Uh, but, it, but it really does help if you ever get accused of oxidizing something that you can say, well, look, it says right here in, in, in your warranty that it naturally oxidized. You know, that's a normal part of weathering on this product. Now, if you've caused uh, excessive oxidation on there, then, then you're going to have, if you've caused excessive oxidation by spraying too strong of a chemical on there, now you're going to have a problem on that. But I know this document has, has saved several people's rear ends um, in the industry uh, avoiding insurance claims because it states in here that um, the product is going to oxidize naturally. And again, the, the, the warranty is, is only good for, for three years as far as the color is concerned. And again, this has nothing to do with, with, with somebody that's painted hardy board. Um, 
that would be under under you know the actual manufacture of that paint. This is for the 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 color color plus technology on the Hardy board itself. Now I want to get into a couple of uh, Paul. The, that document is uh, it, it's in the uh, uh, Pro Library, the the Facebook Pro um, file library in the. Um, uh, well, there's a there's a file library here on Facebook and on the uh, the, the Spray Wash Pro uh, website. So if you want to go there and get it, um, yes, and, and that information is available on on Spray Wash Pro. Um, all right. So some of the questions that I see here: um, process removing lime wash on brick. Ugh, that's a. I'd have to see pick pictures on that. I just, I really would. Um, okay, Doug, you're right. That's why you run a business like a business. My mornings. Yeah, and Jeremy brings a very good picture here. Take pics beforehand if oxidized because we've mentioned that spraying any percentage on bleach can cause further oxidation. 100%. And and it could be lightly oxidized. And, and if you go you know, it, this is why it's important to cool the siding down. Don't spray in direct sunlight on hot siding that, that could be, you know, 130, 140 degrees. Remember also, whenever we spray bleach on a hot surface, the first thing that's, that's, that's evaporating out of there is the water. Okay. Whenever the water goes and evaporates, what are we left with? A stronger percentage of bleach there. Possibly a stronger percentage of bleach than, than they want to be used on there that they want to then the, that hardy allows on there so spray cool surfaces on there um a, a great point jeremy i could if, if any of us have ever had a, a bleach burn on our on our arm um i'm sure several of us have you know you get a little bleach burn on your arm and, and it gets inflamed and red and then you can cut your you can so so imagine your your arm is is now um an oxidized place you get any bleach on there you could be spraying half a percent quarter percent and it burns just the same as as if you're spraying 50 50 on something i mean it's really painful because once that oxidation starts just a slight bit can exacerbate it so so think of, of these hardy boards like that i mean if, if you get up to one that's already oxidized, let, let the people know, um, hey, we've got some oxidation there. Before pictures are absolutely key. Dealing with somebody right now that, that has, you know, a, a major problem. And thank God the techs went out there and took the before pictures because they can see actually some of the um, touch ups on there. And this is this is an interesting thing. So sometimes the, the builders will go and install this product. And let's say it's a color match number 72. And then there's a corresponding Sherwin-Williams number 72 paint that's made for touch ups on there. So they install this color match plank and then they go and touch it up with with a little bit of the. Sherwin Williams paint that's on there. Well, the Sherwin Williams paint color might actually last longer than the color plus technology that's on the board. So now you clean it, the board's oxidized, the paint splotches are actually not. So your 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 siding out there is now looking kind of zebra or uh, a cheetah spotted. So something to to take into consideration. That's again why why the before photographs and the after photographs, but but I'd say the before <laughs> photographs are almost more important than the after um, after ones. Um, let's see here. Treat hardy board three times over the weakest mix possible and use a wide low pressure fan nozzles to persuade the mildew off. When you bleach the out a tendency to stay on the siding and show us white haze, then the client notices it and gets upset and you have to remove the biofilm. 100%. Yes, we, we've seen that happen time and time again, um, especially whenever we've got we've got one with oxidation and we don't want to, 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 to kind of horse it off. We don't want to get there and get hardcore, you know, removal, because now what happens? We remove the oxidation coat. We streak up the hardy board. 
but yeah, the mildew will stay on there, turns into that white haze. So you're, you're really doing a delicate kind of balancing, um, uh, a delicate balancing act on there because you don't want to shoot it at high pressure. You want to kill the mildew, but you also don't want to disturb the oxidation coat that's on there because you disturb the oxidation. Well, now all of a sudden you've got something striped and you're either going to have to go and, and, and use a, a vinyl restoration detergent, gutter butter, uh, cleanse all agent blue, something to, to remove the, the, um, oxidation all over the whole building. So uh, this oxidation thing can, can really get you, but having documents like this can be a major, you know, lifesaver for you uh, to have. And, 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 you know, another reason I just, I firmly believe in, in, in the face-to-face -face estimates and looking at the properties uh, knowing what it is you're dealing with. I mean, if you go do the Google Street View um, bid on this, and I think you're just, you're flirting with disaster on there, uh, you better have some serious disclaimers on your estimate that you send out because what if you show up and the house is, is highly oxidized? What do you do at that point? You know, and remember, a lot of these properties, the first time the neighbor really gets out there and notices it, is right after it's cleaned, right? Right after that property is, is cleaned, it's the first time that these guys are, are really walking around their property in a while and going, and they start to notice every flaw. They start to notice, you know, every little thing that's wrong with it. Um, so so things to, to consider on that. And um, one more thing, if I need to, to talk about this. Um, all other, you know, and, and this is also very, I kind of glossed over this, but something that's, that's very powerful on this warranty, and even though it's removing the liability for oxidation, but, you know, any, any, any claims of damage called by mold or mildew are expressly excluded Lack of proper maintenance is excluded as well. So what a powerful tool to, to your HOAs. What a powerful tool to your homeowners. What a powerful tool to, to anyone that has a, a, a building with hardy siding on there where it says if you don't maintain your property, you're losing your warranty. That's a good sales tool. It really is. Um. Yes. What, 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 what is, um, I think, yeah, I think I just did that by, by saying that touching the base aspects of what James Hardy considers, you know, neglect, not maintaining it is neglect. Um, Doug mentioned that, that Hardy doesn't want some caulking added to, to, to some of their, their siding. And um, the, uh, the regular James Hardy has additional warranties that don't deal with the color on there. This is just for the color plus uh, technology, but um, doesn't, you know, acts of God, obviously, uh, efflorescence or performance of any paints and or coatings, which are not hardy, growth of mold, mildew, fungi, bacteria, or any or organism on any surface of the siding, whether on the exposed or the unexposed surfaces. And in this respect, any claims are caused by mold or mildew. So, and I just had somebody walk in the store, so I'm going to take care of this customer. Guys, hope this was helpful today, and uh, wash on. Hey, how are you doing today? Okay.